We're still learning how to solve quadratic equations. Ones that look sort of like this. So what ways do we know how to do it so far? Uh, yeah, how can you solve this equation? What's one way? Okay, this is like a type 5 factor. Or 3, it could be. It depends if A is 1. So factor it. Set each factor equal to 0, right? What's another way? Yeah? Uh, then we just did, what's that called? Yeah, quadratic, quadratic formula. Which is what? Quadratic. Well, I love that you say it by singing it. I love it. All over 2A. I love that that's how you say it. You won't forget it. You won't forget it. So we're learning another way. So review, look at that. Remember that? What is x plus 3? That quantity squared. Hint. You know what it's not? It's not x squared plus 9. It's not? What do you have to do? Dang. No, I'm not done. What, what? So basically you can square it to the same thing over. Yeah, so this is two factors of this, right? How do I multiply two binomials? Yeah? Um, okay. So here's my first, x times x, x squared. Outside, x times 3. Inside, 3 times x. And the last. And then I combine the oi. Right? Okay. Now we remember, so how, how do I get this one? X squared, x minus 5, that whole thing squared. Uh, x squared plus, plus, plus 10 plus 10x. Yeah, let's do this. Minus 10, minus 5, and then x plus 10 plus 1. So x squared, we agree, right? Yeah. Now this part we have to kind of almost start doing in our head a little bit. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5x minus 5x. Minus 10x, and then negative 5 times negative 5. Yeah? This is kind of a special case. Now, oh no! We can't possibly do that. Yes, we can. Okay, so what does it start with? Okay, so you have negative 3 halves x, minus 3 halves x. What's that? Negative 3 halves minus 3 halves. It's not 0. How do you do that? Right? Denominator stays the same. What's well, negative 3 minus 3? Negative x. Equals? Plus what? 3 halves times 3 halves, right? This times this. It's going to be a plus because it's negative times negative. What's 3 halves times 3 halves, really? We don't know this? 9 fourths. Thank you, right? Well, multiply at the top. Yeah. Multiply at the bottom. Yeah? Fractions still weak? Practice those. Practice them. Okay, can you find a pattern here? x plus 3 squared became x squared plus 6x plus 9. x minus 5 squared became x squared minus 10x plus 25. And this funny thing, x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths. Is there a pattern? What's the pattern? Okay, so we square this guy, right? Yeah. Multiply these two things, yeah? Times 3x became 6x. Negative 5 became negative 10. Times 2. Okay, so we do this times this times 2. 3 times x times 2, right? And then this thing? Square that. That's that. All right, does that work here? Square the first, square the last. Notice how this is a plus, even though this is a minus. Whenever you square something, you look at a plus, right? Negative 5 times negative 5. And then this times this times 2. Negative 5 times x times 2 is negative 10x. Did it work for this one? Yeah. Square the first, square the last. We did this times 2. Well, times 2, right? Doesn't that get knocked out? We get negative 3 out. That's the pattern. So you basically square the first, square the last, and then uh, there's a multiply times 2 going on, right? 
So let's see. Let's see if we can do these a little faster now. So what's this going to be? X squared. X squared. And then you can square that. I'm going to put that one over here, right? Square the first, square the last. Then what happens with this? This times this times 2. Plus 12x. Does that work? Let's see. Let's check it. Right, there's my x squared. 6x plus 6x plus 36. How about this guy? So there's my x squared. What's going to be at the end? Uh, 100. Plus yeah, 100. 100. And then what? Um, 20. 20. X? What kind of 20? So negative 10 times 2 times x. What about this one? Now we got a plus 4 on this side, right? What's in the middle? Come on. Am I following? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of? Yeah. It's a nice little pattern. You can do these a little faster um, if you recognize that pattern. This one's a little trickier, but only because it's fractions. So square that. What's this thing square? Negative seven halves times negative seven halves. Uh, Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Is it negative or positive? Positive. positive? It's always positive. Any number squared is always positive. Now, what happens in here? Remember, you're multiplying times two. That times that. Knocks out, right? Negative seven x. What? There it is. This pattern's kind of helpful. Okay. Oh, okay, I think of some binomials. Let's just think of some other ones to square. X uh, minus seven. What else is x? 
four. X plus four, X plus four. So basically, when I said X squared equals 16, you're saying X equals four. I say there's another answer. There's another solution. Yes, Ryan? Negative four. And we write plus minus four. Remember that new symbol we have? This yeah. is two numbers. It's four and it's negative four. X squared equals 81. What's X? Plus or minus nine. X squared equals 121. What's X? Okay, now listen carefully. Okay, so if X plus four squared equals this, uh, let me make it a little bit easier. X plus four squared equals 16. What's X plus four? What? How'd you get there? How'd you get from here to here? You square root, right? Take square root. So what's the square root of that? Four. Plus or minus four. What is it? Uh, yeah. If you have squares, what are you doing here? You're taking square roots. You're taking plus or minus the square root of 16. This one is plus or minus the square root of 81. So that's all we're doing, plus or minus square root 16. And how do you solve for x, though? Subtract 4. Now, where does that negative 4 go that I'm subtracting? Why am I putting it in front of this plus or minus? Because it's not the same as plus or minus. Does it this plus or minus 1, 4? That doesn't, uh, it's plus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus. I guess you could. Well, this is two numbers here. Think of this as the plus 4, minus 4. So that's going to be negative 4 plus 4. It's also going to be negative 4, minus 4. So you get 0 and negative 8. Have we gotten, does this sort of make sense a little bit? We can do one, let's do another one. X minus 3 squared equals 9. Take the square root of both sides, what happens? X minus 3 and plus or minus 3, just like here. Because something squared is 9, that something could be 3, or that something could be minus 3. Then what? Add 3 to both sides. And I put it in front of that plus minus. What are my two numbers? Three, three minus three, plus three. Three. three plus three. Six. So zero and six are the solutions. This is kind of key. Why'd you get zero? Be able to do this. Because what's three minus three? Uh, three plus three. Let's do one more of these. Uh, uh, X minus four squared equals uh, twenty-five. Uh, X. X minus four equals plus or minus. Plus or minus 5. I want x by itself. So put it in the front, right? Right? Add the 4. 4 plus 5. 4 minus 5. Negative 1. This, to being able to do this is very important. Yes? Yes, ma'am, what's the question? Perfect squares. 
So she's being really smart here. So something times something. So you took you divided that by two, right? Because remember how you have to multiply it by two? So we get that, and then what goes here? Nine. Uh, let's, let's see if we can let's try this again. Why is that not coming up? It's not coming up. Uh, let's see what's happening. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Let me see what there it is. Yeah, it's not working. There it is. I don't know why that didn't work. Okay. X squared plus 10x plus something. Why are we getting these numbers from? What? You looked at my answer. No, how do you get it? Divide by 2. Which is 5. That's 5. That goes here. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. And then you square it, you get there. Okay, let's see. Does it work for this one? X squared plus X. So let's think about what we did here. You took this, you divided by 2, and you squared it. So what's the number here? One. Divided by 2, and square it, what do you get? One. One fourth. Squaring it. One squared over 2 squared. That goes here. This goes here. Right? Because you said this number, divide that by 2, that's what goes here. And then square it, that's what goes here. This one is really not working so well. You got this one. All right, what, what happens with this one? Okay. So what, this is 121 over 4. What goes here? And I put a minus sign, minus 11 halves. Whoa! This is completing the square. You're creating a perfect square trinomial. Completing the square is creating these perfect square trinomials. Let's practice another one. I'm going to make something up here. They're much easier when these numbers are even, aren't they? What goes there? What goes there? Not two. Okay. So what are we doing here? I call this half it, square it. Because isn't that what we're doing? Half it, square it. And now this equals something about binomial square. What does it equal? Um, it kind of is, once you see it. Let's do another one. Um, uh, minus 10x. Complete that square. What goes here? Plus or minus? Always plus. Because you're having this thing which is negative 5, right? Square that, always plus. What does that look like? Uh, it's minus, minus, minus 5. So it's basically this thing over 2 goes here. Okay. So, oh, all right. Conclusion. There's a whole lot of words here. Um, oh, if you have something that looks like x squared plus b over x, you find what that number is in front of the x, right? So if I'm doing this one here, and I don't know if this one's on here. It's an example one. So just watch. Right? Here's the number in front. You find it. It's 8. I think that's what I want to put. I'll do that one after. Okay. Then what? Half of it. What's half of eight? Four. Four. Then what? Oh. Square it. Okay. Okay. What I'm saying here. Square it. This is C. That's what goes here. X squared plus eight. X plus sixteen. Now, how do you turn it into that binomial square? It's this number. All right, now, it's easy when this is an even number, it's much easier. But if it's an odd number, do the same thing. Take half of it, 5 halves, square it. 25 over 4. So that's the C, x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4. And now you can write it as a square. What's that going to be? x plus 5. No, this is way easier with the fractions. It's much harder. If you turn that into a decimal, it's way harder. So leave it like that. Um, you try. So two things I want you to do here. Find C. Remember, half it, square it. And then I want you to write it as the binomial square, which means that thing. Okay, so take a second. See if we can figure that out. Always positive this C. Always, because you get there by squaring something. Always positive. All right, let, let's check this out. So this is what we should have gotten. Uh, did we get this? Uh, yeah. 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 Half of 12 is 6. 6 squared is 36. 
So you take the square root of the x, take the square root of that, that's a plus, or you just look at that over 2 is plus 6. You are factoring that. You're basically factoring that guy. All right, this one, negative 4, half of negative 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is positive 4. Always going to be positive. Always. C will always be positive. This becomes x minus 2 squared. Here's that minus 2. It goes right there. If you multiply out x minus 2 squared, you get that. So you're factoring. Now this one, it's the same rules. Take half of 3, you get 3 halves. Square it, you get 9 fourths. So that's x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths. This is a perfect square trinomial because it will become x plus 3 halves. Square, right? That 3 halves is what goes here. Isn't it? Yes. Uh, if it's larger than 1, you have to divide everything through by that number. So the x squared always has to be 1. So if you have a 2 in front, say, you would have to divide everything through by 2. So when we get to that, first let's do it without, um, we don't even have to do it just when it's an easy case. So what happened here? It was easy. What is happening? I can't see what's happening. Okay. All right. So how do you solve quadratic by completing the square? And there's all kinds of stuff on this paper. It's harder to explain than to do. So I try to do it one step at a time. Identify the B value. Now one thing, look at this. Isn't this different than what we've seen so far? We have always been doing this. Right? It has to look like this. Now with this one, you're going to you have to divide through by the A. So this is when uh, you ask the question, uh, can I have anything you can't? So that would get divided through. And you have to have the number on the other side. So you always have to set it up like this. So all that means is if I said um, solve this, subtract the 15 to the other side. Just start like that. Okay? And basically, you solve you start like that. Leave a space though. Because we're gonna be completing the square right here. Okay? Complete the square. Take half and square. What's half of negative 16? Negative 8 square that. So I'm putting a plus 64 here. This is an equation. I added 64 to one side. What do I have to do to keep this thing in balance? Add to the other side. I have to add it to the other side. Most common mistake, you forget to add it to the other side. Who's following so far? Who has a question? Who's not even listening? Okay. Have to add it to both sides. Now, you are going to factor this, which is what we've been practicing doing. How do you turn that? into a binomial square. Oh, uh, uh, minus eight. 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 Right. Square root, square root, this side. And then what's negative 15 plus 64? What is it? Is it 49? I hope so. Yeah, 49. OK, now this is kind of what we were practicing a little bit before. It's, it's, oh, it's, so it's, something squared is 49, minus right? X minus so eight. x minus 8 plus equals or minus plus seven. or minus 7. Because something squared was 49, that something could be 7, or that something could be negative 7. Okay. I want x by itself. 8 plus or minus 7. Plus eight. 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 So then what are the answers? 8 minus 7. 1 plus 7. Who followed? If you can follow that, you have another way of solving a quadratic equation. I did not have to factor. I did not have to use a quadratic formula. Actually, one. How do you get the 64? How do you verify this? How do you get the 64? What? Oh, I get it. I get it. How do I get the 64? Remember, I had 64 on this side. Half it and squared it. And once you had 64 on this side, you have to do it again. I think I've got some other examples. I sure. Yeah, let's do this one. Which uh, this is towards the middle-ish of page two here. So let's see. It has to be in this form: x squared plus something x equals something. A number. What? I got two here. I have to divide everything by two. So what happens here? The 2x squared plus 20x minus 8 equals 0. Divide everything by 2. x squared plus 10x minus 4 equals 0. Who's with me? Who's with me? All right. What do I do next? Put the 4 on the other side. And leave a little space here. I'm going to be completing the square. All right. 
With me so far. Yeah, with you. Yeah. Just me. Thank you, Matthew. We and Matthew, we got this. All right. Now, how do I complete the square? Divide by two. Divide by two. Divide by two. So what do you get? Divide. Twenty-five. Positive twenty-five. Positive twenty-five. Always positive, right? Always. All right, I added 25 to the left side of an equation. I want to keep this equality. What has to happen? Push the right. Add it on this side, right? You have to do it. You won't have an equation otherwise. OK. Now I write this as my binomial squared. X plus 5. X plus 5 squared equals, add these numbers. 29. All righty. OK. And then S. Square root both sides, right? Plus or minus, not a perfect square, so I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 21. Uh, 5 plus or minus. Negative 5. Why negative? Subtracting, Subtracting the 5 to put it on the other side. Okay. If you use the quadratic formula, you get the same thing. See that plus or minus? Now, what if I want it um, as decimals? That's where your calculator will help you. So it will be uh, that right there. negative 5 minus 29, or square root 29. Square root 29, approximately negative 10.39. That's one solution. <coughs> now I have to add that square root 29 plus the square root oh, plus square root of 29.39. Look at that. <coughs> so I didn't have to do any complicated substitution. I didn't have to factor it. Bing, bang, boom, there they are. Yep. Uh, easiest, I, I like to use this one, I'll tell you one, when this is an even number and I don't have anything, this one was easy to divide by two, sometimes they're not so easy. So uh, you have another choice now. But we have to kind of get this. So I've got some other examples here. Yeah, this is towards the bottom now. So let's just, we're going to do three of them. This, this will get you. So x squared plus 6x, leave a little space, what goes here? What? No, negative five. Right, so the number goes to the right. Complete the square. What goes here? A nine. Right, and it's always plus. I added nine to the left side. What has to happen to the right side? Okay. Turn this into binomial square. X plus three. What's negative five plus nine? Four. Four. All right. Now what? X, X plus 3 equals 2, plus or minus 2. Another very common mistake, we forget the plus or minus. So two common mistakes, we forget to add that, that C, that completed square on both sides, and we forget the plus or minus, then what? X What's X? X equals minus 3 plus or minus 2. Which minus is? 3. Negative uh, 3 minus I beg you ask the question. I Don't go home and like suffer. Uh, I like to uh, suffer. Uh, Amy. Uh, right after we brush the x plus three. From here to here? Yeah. Is it, you just uh, put x plus three. I'm taking the square root of both sides. Oh, okay. Right? Because the yeah. square root of anything squared is that thing. Okay. And this is the plus or minus square root of it. Yes. Plus or minus. Plus or minus because x squared equals four, right? What's x? Plus or minus two. Isn't it? Because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Same thing. Something squared is 4. So that something is either 2 or negative 2. Let's try this guy. x squared minus 2x. It's already got the 1 on the other side. So I'm just going to make some space because I have to complete the square. What goes here? Um, oh. 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 I need the plus or minus. What goes here? How do you know what it's the plus or minus? Always plus, because you're squaring the number to get there. It's always going to be plus. Now I added one here. What has to happen? You have to add one. Got to add one to the other side. Again, common mistake number one is you forget to do that. Turn this into its perfect square binomial here. What is that? Right, square root of that, square root of that. It's this sign. Equal two. All right. Now I'm taking square root of both sides. One. Plus or minus square root of 2. The square root of 2 is not 1. 
It's whatever it is, 1.4, blah, blah, blah. How do you get one? Huh? How do I get one? I took half of this. And I squared oh, it. Oh. That goes there, right? Then what? Then you add one. Add one. Add one to both sides. This is the exact solutions. There's two numbers: one plus square root, one minus square root. If you want to get this to the nearest hundred, uh, you put it in the calculator. Uh, it's approximately negative four point four one. Then I have to uh, add two point four one.
take the square root. I take the square root of one side, that takes the square root of the other. But I want the plus minus square root. That's where this is. Okay.